What is up guys, I'm back and I want to preface this video by saying I ended up selling my OnePlus 2. Was it because the phone wasn't good? No, it's a good phone but it just wasn't for me. So the OnePlus 2 is the follow up to the successful OnePlus 1 from a little over a year ago but can it live up to the hype that surrounded it prior to its launch? Let's find out. The first thing that will stand out if you're an owner of a OnePlus 1 and get this device as an upgrade is definitely the new build materials. The OnePlus 2 definitely feels premium in the hand with the sandstone back cover along with this aluminum surrounding the device. However, if you're not a fan of the sandstone, you can easily get one of the available style swap covers and I personally like the black apricot so I grabbed one as soon as I got the chance. Both the volume and power buttons are located on the right and they are extremely tactile and sturdy although I wish the power button was located where the volume down button is located like I said in my first impressions video and on the right is the all new alert slider. This alert slider allows you to quickly change between Android's new notification modes and the texture on the button really gives it a nice grip especially as you're sliding your finger up and down and it's easy to slide it over the button without actually toggling it. At the top you'll find a 3.5mm headphone jack and while at the bottom you'll see two speaker grills, there's really only one and it doesn't sound too impressive honestly. And next to it is the new USB-C port which is really convenient since it's reversible although it doesn't support any sort of fast charging. And finally, on the back of the device, you'll find a 13 megapixel camera with a f2.0 lens, dual LED flash and laser autofocus. The OnePlus 2 is sporting a 1920 by 1080 display and while you might be thinking, what, we're in 2016 where 2K is the norm and OnePlus launches a device called a 2016 flagship killer with a 1080p display and while that might be a reasonable argument spec-wise, I'm personally kinda happy they went with 1080p since there's a point of diminishing returns. Will the jump to 2K be so noticeable that you trade it for the faster battery drain? Some of you may, some of you may not but personally I'm okay with 1080p. While I don't like to talk about specs much and you guys know that, I'll just make mention of them real quick. The OnePlus 2 64GB model comes in at $389 and under the hood you'll find the Snapdragon 810 CPU, Adreno 420 GPU, 4GB of RAM and a 3300mAh battery powering the entire package. On the surface side it's running Oxygen 2.0 out of the box and since it's pretty close to stock Android, although pretty close is kind of an understatement, you'll get some solid performance for sure. You'll also get some nice additions like the ability to change between a dark and light version of the operating system as well as the accent colors so you can really make it fit your personality a bit better. So the iPhone line always sported the best all-round camera you can find on a smartphone but with devices like the LG G4 and the Samsung Galaxy S6 surpassing them in not just features but quality as well. Android buyers are starting to pay a little more attention to the cameras on their devices while doing their research now. On the OnePlus 2 you won't find a totally mind-blowing camera but you'll definitely find a pretty good one. In proper lighting, images look outstanding and dynamic range is really impressive. The images that come off this camera look really sharp and vibrant. However, it struggles a bit in low light and slightly noisy images are the result but they aren't unusable or anything. On the other hand, even the front camera takes some pretty awesome photos as well. Just don't expect the front camera to take a good photo if you're in a dark area and the background is bright. Obviously. In terms of video, it didn't really impress me that much but I use it for some of the vlogs on my daily vlog channel which I'll leave in a card above this video at the top right so if you want to check those out you can. Now the OnePlus 2 is a really great device for a really great price as you know but it doesn't come without some downsides. Number 1 being the fingerprint sensor slash capacitive home button. When it works, it works really well but that's it, sometimes it just doesn't work. You'll be hitting the capacitive home button to go home and it will literally just ignore you, not even a haptic response. However, if you really like the device and want to get one or already own one and this could be a deal breaker for you, there's a simple workaround. You can install all-in-one gestures from the Google Play Store and set any of the gesture commands to go home. Although this doesn't really fix the fingerprint sensor ignoring you but just the home button functionality. Number 2 is the omissions. You'll find a lot of nice things on the OnePlus 2 but NFC, fast charging and a micro SD card slot won't be among those. I can understand no micro SD card slot and somewhat fast charging but I can't find a feasible reason why they would actually leave out NFC especially when Android Pay is currently rolling out and is expected to be widely adopted. I guess if you own a OnePlus 2 you won't be in that group that makes NFC payments assuming they don't find some kind of workaround to add NFC to the device. A little over a year ago the OnePlus 1 was a steal of a deal but since then there are a lot of other companies producing amazing smartphones for the price like the Moto X Pure which makes the OnePlus 2 less likely to succeed as much as the One did. Also, personally I think a major contributor to the success of the OnePlus One was the fact that it launched right when the developers who loved the Nexus 5 so much wanted to upgrade but the next Nexus wasn't out yet and when it did come out it was just too huge for some users. All in all, the OnePlus 2 is a really solid device but it isn't the only device you can get for a relatively low price with flagship specifications. 
However, like everything else, this is personal preference and if you like the OnePlus 2 and you know the downsides beforehand, you'll definitely enjoy it for sure. There's no reason to go out and get another phone that you don't like just because one guy on YouTube said it's missing some stuff. So that's been it for this video. I really recommend the OnePlus 2 if you know the downsides beforehand and you accept it and it isn't a deal breaker for you. But yeah, if that's the case, I, re I highly recommend it. You should definitely get it. It's a really great phone, but it just wasn't for me personally. But thank you guys so much for watching this video. Give it a huge thumbs up if you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.